we'll just begin uh, an opening prayer, okay? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the loving mercy of God, as we gather today, we ask you to bless us and pour out your blessing upon these parents who are preparing for the sacraments of their, of their children. In these, these days of uh, uncertain, we pray for your blessing upon all of us that we may prepare well and that these children may grow in your love, mercy, and grace. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, uh, just before we begin a disclaimer, um, my secretary son, James, is pretty good with video and YouTube and so on, so he's recording this because obviously you know your friends and um, patriots at school that aren't there are going to phone tomorrow and say, when can we make this up? And it's going to be called YouTube, okay? So uh, we learn to do by doing, so that's what they're going to be doing tomorrow. Okay, so, so just the agenda for this evening, we're going to uh, just an overview of the sacraments, what we're doing, why we're doing it, and then um, kind of a little bit about the parents, what parents can do, and just logistics and details about the sacraments and questions. Hopefully, we won't be much more than half an hour uh, so you can get your, your children uh, to bed this evening, okay? So we're going to be preparing for two sacraments uh, this year, First Holy Communion and Reconciliation. Reconciliation will be celebrated uh, first. But, uh, so I, but I wanted to talk about just, you know, the, the Word of God and what are the sacraments, what are we doing, why um, are we doing these things, and so on. So to begin, just talk a little bit about the Eucharist. So this quote comes from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord, but I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So I think, you know, just reading St. Paul there gives us a real sense of what we are doing, right? Why do we do this? Why? Because we've received it from the Lord and we are handing it on. And that's exactly what St. Paul is describing in the, to the people of Corinth. Why are you gathering to celebrate the Mass? Why are you gathering to celebrate the Lord's Supper? Because we received it from the hands of Jesus. And so the idea of the word tradition, a very, to hand on. So we have been commissioned, and especially you as parents, have been commissioned to hand on the faith to your children. And so this is what we're getting ready for this year in the children's lives and our children in grade two. So when we talk about um, what we're doing, we're celebrating a sacrament. And so the church professes that there are seven official sacraments, and uh, your children hopefully have all received their first sacrament, which was the sacrament of baptism. But what, we, what do we say? What is a sacrament? So the first definition of a sacrament is uh, an outward sign. So in other words, all of the sacraments have some sort of physical tangible reality. It is something that we can perceive with our senses. Uh, we can see it, we hear it, we taste it, we feel it, and so on. So again, all of the sacraments have some sort of reality matter that is important uh, to them. So the second part of the definition of a sacrament is that it's instituted by Christ. That it comes to us from the ministry of Jesus, whether it's something like um, the Last Supper, which is direct, we have that exactly in the Bible, you know, do this in memory of me, um, baptism, go baptize the nations, as Jesus said, or sometimes things can be a little more indirect, like confirmation, which is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But we do see that reality in the early church, of course, with regards to confirmation, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And so each of the sacraments is meant to give us um, 
grace. And that word grace, it means gift. You know, we say grace before meals because we are thanking God for the gift that we have received. So every sacrament is meant to give us some sort of grace, a gift, a gift from God. And hopefully when I visit the kids in their class, we'll talk about some of the, the gifts that we receive in the sacraments. Um, we always must be mindful, too, that the celebration of the sacraments are vital to the expression of our Catholic faith. We believe that the sacraments um, make the church and are a sign of the church um, is, is alive and there's the reality in our lives. So, um, we really, you know, we cannot live our Catholic faith without um, the, the sacraments. And in particular, when we look at the Eucharist, the Eucharist is considered the, the primordial sacrament, the most important of all of the sacraments. So the Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life. The other sacraments and indeed all the ecclesiastical ministries and works of the Apostle are bound up with the Eucharist and are oriented toward it. For in the Blessed Eucharist is contained the whole spiritual good of the Church, namely Christ Himself, our past. And this is a quote from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Okay? So, you know, the significance of the Eucharist, again, all of the, the um, sacraments have a certain significance. So the significance of the Eucharist, um, this is our past, in that definition from the Catechism. The word past, uh, pasco, or um, who of you don't speak or you speak another language, like a Latin language. How about Easter in Spanish? Pasqua. How about Portuguese? Pasqua. How about in French? Who's in French immersion? Anyone in French immersion? No. No French immersion? In French, Easter is a pack. So the word uh, Pasqua, Pas, Pascal is linked to the Jewish celebration of Passover. So Jesus, on the night before he died, was celebrating a Passover meal in which the Jewish people remembered God saving them from being slaves in Egypt. And so our, our past is Jesus saving us from the power of sin. So the Mass is an offering for our deliverance from sin. However, in the Mass, it is always Jesus who is the one who is offering and who is offered. The idea that Jesus is the priest and the sacrifice in every Mass. So the Eucharist represents, not represents, but represents, in other words, makes alive the cross of Jesus to us. It is one and the same sacrament. And, or sacrifice. So again, if we acknowledge that the most important event ever to happen was Jesus dying on the cross and rising again on the third day. The Mass is that which makes us, contacts us with that event and makes it present to us. And so the, um, the Mass contains the good of the Church, Jesus Himself. Jesus is really present in the bread and wine. It is truly His body and blood. And so we consume um, the Eucharist communion as nourishment, as spiritual food to nourish us on our journey of Christian discipleship. Um, so sometimes, you know, we throw out um, some words that maybe we need to kind of define. So I talked about Passover. I think I explained the word Passover. Um, we use the word Eucharist. The word Eucharist is a Greek word which means thanksgiving. So to, to give thanks to God every time we celebrate uh, the Mass. This we call the word the Eucharist. Communion um, is, is to be in relationship with. I usually try to explain communion to the kids by getting them to come up with the word communication, community, you know, relationship. Um, you know, how are we in 
communion with God, our relationship with God through Holy Communion. And of course, it is food. So it is nourishment. The communion is food, nourishment for the journey. The word mass, which I think is the more common word that we use, actually simply comes from the end of the Eucharistic celebration in the, in the Latin, when the priest, we say now go in peace or go forth, the Mass is ended. In the Latin Mass is ita misa est. It is finished, go. You know, and it's the word mission. In other words, the, the, from the Mass we receive kind of the graces to go back into the world and live our Christian faith. That's what the word Mass comes from, that Latin word uh, misa, from which we get the English also mission. Um, so Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. So these words of Jesus. So that's the Eucharist, that's the meaning of the Eucharist. So we're going to also be celebrating um, confession, reconciliation um, this year. And so again, the sacrament of reconciliation. So this quote comes from the end of the Gospel of John, Jesus appearing to the disciples on the day of the resurrection and saying to them um, at the end simply, you know, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. So Jesus appearing before the apostles, the first, uh, those who he sends into the world to spread his message for the forgiveness of um, sins. So, you know, the significance of um, confession. So through the power of the Holy Spirit, we receive God's forgiveness for our sins. The verbal acknowledgement helps us to be aware of our sinful nature and to deal with our weaknesses in an honest and meaningful way. Of course, it's not meant to be fearful nor humiliating experience, but one of openness and humility as we open ourselves to the truth of our sinful ways. So, uh, again, we're going to be preparing uh, the children for both of these uh, this year. So I'm going to take a moment just to talk about um, the parental role in this. And I'm going to begin with um, reconciliation. With regards to confession, so again, I think we should be talking a little bit about those words. Sometimes we forget we throw out words and... Um, don't explain this. So, again, reconciliation is healing, right? To reconcile a friendship is to heal a friendship. Confession is the act of admitting something, right? To confess is to admit. Uh, we also use the word penance. Uh, penance is to make up for the wrong we have done, okay? So, those are the, the three words that we use, and again, um, most commonly, we use the word confession. Like you'll see in the moment of confession times, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It has been six months since my last confession. But those are the words we use, confession. But again, uh, your, the children may, if they're getting in school, may hear reconciliation, um, not so many often as penance. Okay? So, um, reconciliation. The idea that at the age of about seven or eight, your children are coming to what we call the age of reason. In other words, they're coming to that state in life where they understand that something is wrong because it's wrong, as opposed to it's wrong because someone in authority told me it was wrong, right? So it's not a matter of, um, of uh, obeying a higher authority, um, but it's the fact that they can understand in and of itself that something is wrong. And that's assume that, the, that, that at about the age of seven or eight, they, they begin to kind of realize that this is true. So, again, with regards to uh, parental roles, especially for reconciliation, 
the one-on-one -on -one with you is probably um, the most important thing that you can do because they can't, I don't know how to put it, in school or in a class, they can kind of <coughs> grasp it, they can get the general things, but the, the understanding of something is wrong and why it's wrong, um, the difference between an accident and something that they actually chose to do, um, going through uh, an examination of conscience, there's one of the handouts is an examination of conscience. Um, you can look them up online as well for children's examination of conscience. You go through one, something like that to help them understand um, why things are wrong and the nature of things that are wrong. Um, one thing that is helpful too is, is going through confession to help them do things in general. Like, I lied, I fought with my brothers and sisters. Um, the priests don't need gory details, okay, <laughs> with regards to that. Or, or excuses. I always tell the children, no excuses in confession, you know. I, I disobeyed my parents by not giving my sister the iPad. That's all you need to do. As opposed to saying she didn't deserve the iPad because last night she hawked it for three hours. And despite the fact that mom and dad told her to give it to me. And so, you know, you're laughing because you know exactly what that is, is like, okay? Um, and, to, and to go through the procedure on how to receive a confession is good individually as well. One thing about confession, because it's an individual sacrament, the more individual preparation you can do is better. Because I'll go into a classroom and some of the teachers are, are great, you know? Okay, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. This is my first confession and these are my sins. They're all saying it together. But then I get them by themselves up here in the front of the church. What am I supposed to say again? Right? Um, because it's, it's, like, it's like sometimes the response is at max, right? I don't know if you've heard, somehow wound up in a mask with you and the priest or something, and like, what am I supposed to say again? Where you can, you know, on Sunday you know them like this, because other people are joining you. So, because confession is so private, um, it's good that you practice it for going through the procedure with them. And then, again, help them with the act of contrition. So, um, you did receive these handouts tonight, the brief examination of conscience and um, how to go to confession and an act of contrition um, to practice with your children, okay? That would be great. They'll be also uh, on the website and email to everyone, okay? Does anyone have any questions about that? But this is really, I was gonna say, really important as parents to go through. So First Communion, which is really important, is, um, you know, help your children become familiar with the Mass, the responses and the gestures. Um, it's really important to begin uh, attending Mass with your children now so that the, the church is familiar to them, they understand um, what's happening here, what's going on, and that they're comfortable uh, with church. Again, if you're not comfortable yet because of COVID and other such things to come to church, you can consider watching uh, Mass online in order to kind of uh, get a sense of what's going on and how the Mass uh, flows regularly. Okay, so it's, it, it, it is important to be present um, on the, the weekend liturgy, the Saturday night or Sunday morning liturgy uh, with your children. Uh, just as a word of uh, practical, do we have recently a couple weeks started children's liturgy, which is the 11 a.m. Mass only, and they, they just, they need for the liturgy of the word and then come back to the Eucharist. Okay, so they kind of listen to a different reading, which is a little simpler, and then uh, the leaders kind of lead them through a little explanation of the readings. Okay. Um, now I'm going to work on just some of the practical details, which I think is mostly on your blue sheet. Um, now again, before I sent these dates, I did, I did send everything to the principals, um, and um, they've had the dates for about a month, but I don't think they've really communicated them to, to anybody. Um, 
<laughs> One thing is to, just to mention too, and sometimes if you're talking to others at the school and so on, with the privacy rules, um, they can give us any information. And I, I'm ordained over 25 years now. When I was first ordained, the schools could give us class lists. We could go through and, and try and contact those who didn't contact us. We can't do that anymore, okay? So all we can do is send the information forward. It's up to parents to get in touch with us to register uh, for the sacraments. And that being said, um, you know, I, I'm not a stickler for dates and things. You know, all I need to know about it, okay, just tell your friends to get in touch with us and sign up, okay? <laughs> we'll be okay with that, okay? So with regards to um, first reconciliation, this kind of became a bit of a practice during COVID. Um, and I do think it works well um, for, from my perspective. One of the reasons it does work well is is with we do big groups, we've got to find more priests to help, and that's getting to be a struggle. So this doing it this way, I can handle uh, the, the children on my own. So we just do two evenings. They're going to be uh, after the beginning of Lent. We'll start at 6, finish at 7.30 p.m. And the date is not divided by school. The children will come, make their first reconciliation, receive their penance. They can maybe pray their penance in the church and then go home. Uh, one of the things too is it's, it's often the way that we celebrate reconciliation every week. People line up, they go to confession, um, either they stay for Mass or, and they go home. Um, so there'll be, uh, you can sign up for a 15 minute interval. One of the things with this though, of course, don't get worried if um, you're going to be five minutes late or ten minutes late for your 15 minute interval. <coughs> not going to be an issue. Or if you arrive 10 minutes early, it's not an issue. Basically what we're going to attempt to do is maybe have four or five families in the church at any one time, the children go to confession, and then they, they leave. Okay? Um, so it's it's pretty open kind of thing. So it's something that you can, again, squeeze in between karate and so on. So it's easy, depending on your schedule. It works, it works well. Okay? If it doesn't work for you, the um, every Saturday we have confessions at 4 to 4.30 in the back of the church. Um, you can come to that if that works. And before Easter, there'll be extra hours of confession too. So if you're following the bulletin, just come um, to one of those, okay? This is my first confession. You know, I fought with my brother and sister. I disobeyed mom and dad. I didn't do my homework. You know, I use bad language. Uh, for these and all my sins, I am sorry. It's rather, it doesn't take very long. Okay? Any questions about that? And then First Holy Communion. Um, so right after Easter, um, the 29th of, of um, Shortly after, we're doing confirmation right after Easter, and then we're doing First Communions, and then the, the 6th uh, of May is the ordinations to the priesthood for the diocese, and I know some of them, so I'm going to be attending that. That's why it's not the 6th of May. So it's those, those three, uh, or two Saturdays, end of April, and then the second Saturday of May. Um, again, if you're not able to attend your school's uh, date, then... Um, you're, you're free to come and join the other schools or to just pick a Mass um, that is convenient for either Saturday night Mass or one of the Sunday morning Masses and uh, we'll reserve a couple pews for you uh, for that. We've had to, uh, last year that happened a bit because of COVID, right? The day that it was scheduled, then someone came down with COVID in the house and then they couldn't join their class. So we had to do that a, a few times. And it works for you. Or again, maybe families coming from another country in the summertime, that's fine. Okay. Um, so again, for logistics for First Holy Communion, we'll reserve one pew uh, for family. Again, if you've been to St. Mary's, you know that they're not big pews. They can hold about 
um, five adults. And so the children will receive communion with their family. services because we are under capacity restrictions, but they were lifted by the time we celebrated First Communion, and we had no issues with um, attendance at all. I don't think for any sacrament did we use this space. Everyone fit in the church, all of them. So that's why I, I'm assuming that um, we should be okay. We never used this space last year, so it might be a little bit different this year um, because of things so uh, being more open and so on. So that's what's going on. So with regards to um, photography, um, we just ask you not to do pictures during uh, the Mass, um, and then I'll be available for pictures after Mass so you can use the church to, I was, again, we're still kind of in a transition zone, so probably if everything is, is fairly open as it is now, maybe we'll just have the kids stand up at the front and, and have a few parents take pictures, yes. Yeah, we haven't um, Getting professional photographers is a difficult and people, because, of, because people are getting good with this, they're not as open to it becomes less of a... Um, in terms of gluten intolerance, we do have low gluten hosts, okay, so they are 99.99% gluten free, but I think technically if you are a real celiac, you should not be having them. You need to just receive a little bit of the precious blood uh, from the chalice if that is the case. So again, if you have a low gluten, you need that, let us know and we can arrange that. Um, uh, I just added a note here, I remembered something last year. There was one, two parents last year had texture issues. If that is an issue with your children, we can give you some unconsecrated hosts, and then you can take them home and practice. You know, if that's an issue for you. Um, so, because actually last year someone actually went online and bought a box. There was no need to do that, because she gave us the leftovers. That's all I know. Okay. Um, so that just kind of got into too much. Um, so again, certificates, we need your baptismal certificate. Um, so again, that's the time. Please of baptism. Um, registrations are still welcome. Oh, if your child has not been baptized, um, they will just be baptized with the regular <coughs> baptisms that are happening um, every second week with the children. So if there is no baptism, let us know. Now, um, if you are not Catholic, though, you can't baptize your children until at least one parent is Catholic. So that's an issue. I don't know if that's an issue for anyone here. Um, I do have to apologize. I'm coming for you. From Halton, and Halton didn't allow non Catholic admissions into the school. Very, very few. But I think this board is much more lenient. So that's kind of. Uh, okay. Um, so again, there's no um, uh, capacity limits and so on right now. So we should be okay with um, guests. But again, just be mindful, this is not a paid church, so don't invite the whole world to the first thing. Okay. Um, 
So in terms of um, dress and so on, so we just got some of this stuff here. Um, so Sunday dress is, is appropriate. Boys usually wear suits or a shirt and tie, and the young ladies wear a white dress. And if the young ladies have gloves, they'll have to remove them before they can receive communion, but it's okay. Um, and so on. And in the reserve pew, we'll leave you your baptism for your first communion certificate and then just a, an offertory envelope uh, for that day. Um, again, just a reminder with regards to dress, you know, there's no need to go over top, over the top. Just, you know, Sunday best, as best as you are able, okay? Uh, don't get too uh, crazy about that. Um, again, Canada is a multicultural country. So depending on where you, you came from, there may have been a certain dress that was normative. Um, but here, everything goes, okay? Does that make sense? Uh, the one I'm thinking of is some cultures have the young boys have to have like a white ribbon on their arm. That's not necessary, okay? But if, but if you do have it, it's fine, okay? I, I just, the only reason I haven't asked that question before, someone said like, do we have to have that? We have to have that? Does anyone have any questions at all? Yes. Uh, if our child is a student at the parish school, but we as a family belong to a different parish, that's fine. That's fine. You're welcome. Again, if you want to go and join your own parish, that's fine as well. No, you're 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 welcome. It's just a you know different. It wasn't the practice anymore, so that's why. I'm no, no, I'm. Yeah. That's fine. We're not. I'm not going to. It's just like you say. It's whatever you're most comfortable with. Right? If they want them with their class. Um, that's fine. If if not, you want to go to your own parish. That's fine as well. I know there's a, a sometimes a pressure to do it with your class, but I was going to say the the families that had to choose the, just doing it at the Sunday mass, they were they kind of liked it. <laughs> Because it's a more, I don't know, you're, you're, you're the center of attention. Yeah, you're all by yourself, you know, center of attention. And, and there's more room for family to be up close with you and so on. Do you have any other questions at all? Um, again, we're still kind of navigating post-COVID. We'll do the best we can in terms of trying to get into the schools. And, and uh, well, you know, you're, you're there. You know the stress that's going on, so um, I kind of have a theory, I'm not one to add to, to people's stress, you know, <laughs> so, because it's saying, you know, like, well, what about an extra class or extra time for the, well, you know, we can't do, Monday night is no good because this group has got karate, Tuesday night's no good because I've got mass, Thursday night, Wednesday night's no good because you got hockey, Saturday morning's no good because you can dance, or you're with the other parent. So, well, that was one of the, the the points too. Again, please, if there is separation and divorce, please be Christian about it. Make sure the other parent is involved and knows what's going on. Don't do anything behind their backs um, and so on. Okay. Pardon? Okay. I think I think the troops are getting restless. <laughs> and, um, We'll just conclude with an Our Father, okay? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from